Morning everyone, um, I thought today I'd talk to you about uh, a feature, a feature I found on the Kona Electric that I really wasn't expecting to find. I wasn't expecting the car to have it. I don't recall seeing it in the advertising or in the specifications. It, uh, it was just a complete surprise to me and I'm very, very pleased that we've got the feature. And it's smart regeneration or auto recuperation. Now, I've talked about regen levels already, and we've got regen level 3, 2, 1, and coasting. And then you've got the ability with the left hand paddle to um, bring the car to a complete stop on regeneration braking as well. Now those things are brilliant, and it's one of the main features that I really like about the Kona, because it gives you the flexibility of how you want to drive the car, and it's very easily accessible. I didn't like the Nissan Leaf with the brake um, B option, where you put your left hand down and and pull the drive lever back, etc. The fact that the Kona's got it on the paddles, it's more intuitive, it's uh, easy as well, and you've got the flexibility to drive it how you want. But, there is a but, with so much flexibility, it can sometimes be a pain. You're driving along on a nice flat road, an A road, and you've got it in coasting to be efficient, and then you come to a roundabout, so you're flicking the paddles to regen level two, or uh, maybe even three, because you need to bring it to a complete stop almost, those sort of things. And, Yes, it's fun to play with the paddles, but do you want to do it every day and uh, all the time with your driving? And wouldn't it be nice to have some automatic modes? Well, the auto recuperation, the smart regeneration, that is, that is the automatic way of doing it for you, but with some extras. And it's those extras that, for me, make it uh, the surprise feature that uh, I absolutely love about the car at the moment. And let me, let me explain how it really works. Basically, if you're in manual regen levels and uh, you're driving along and you see an obstacle in front, say it's a line of traffic with a roundabout, then you can do one pedal driving uh, just on the accelerator. So foot off the accelerator, starting to coast up towards the back of them, and then you can pull the regen levels for additional braking uh, to bring yourself to a stop. And that's the way the manual describes it as one pedal driving, using the left hand paddle to increase regeneration braking. And therefore, um, instead of using the foot brake, you can just use regen braking from the hand, and that's one pedal driving. But I've found using smart regeneration and auto recuperation, it's actually better one foot driving using that facility. And the reason for that is because it appears to integrate some of the uh, smart cruise control features into the smart recuperation. So not only is it deciding what regen level to give you depending on the circumstances, but it's also detecting traffic. So yesterday I was out driving the car and uh, driving along an A road doing about 55 miles an hour and a car pulls out from a left hand lane in front of me. Now normally um, you take your foot off the throttle and engine braking would coast you towards the car and you'd cover the brake and use it if you needed to. Well with the auto recuperation on the car detects the car in front of you and starts applying the brake for you using regen braking. So you can see the car going from coasting mode to regen level one or two, whatever it requires to bring the car um, to a slowdown, not a stop. Um, it slows the car sufficiently to keep a good distance in the same sort of way that the um, active cruise control does, the smart cruise control, where it will adjust the speed of your own car um, to match the speed of the traffic in front of you. So if it detects something that's just arrived in front of you and now has a shorter distance than it would like, then it slows you down. So it's, it's like cruise control, but with cruise control off. So uh, let's get that one out of the way. Uh, regen braking, um, all of the options seem to disappear when you're in smart cruise control. Then basically the regen levels aren't visible to you. Uh, visible, right, front of the dash, um, I'll put a picture up now, there's um, a section underneath the speedo and that's where there's a little battery sign and under that sign you'll get a 1, 2 or 3 or 0 for coasting or regen levels 1, 2 and 3 when you're using them. When you've got the user settings set to allow smart regeneration or smart recuperation, whichever, whichever it is actually called, um, you can turn it on and off again once it's set uh, using the right hand paddle. Holding the right hand paddle in for a second or more will toggle it on and off if the setting's set in the user um, options in the first place. So when you do that, instead of having one, two and three and zero appearing underneath the battery, you now get um, the battery sign either illuminates white or it illuminates blue and you get some arrows inside the battery. One, two or three arrows or no arrows. No arrows is the equivalent to zero for coasting, 
one arrow is the equivalent to regen level one, etc. So basically there's enough differentiation that you can really tell whether it's in auto mode. Now what's the white and the blue? Well, if the battery sign is white, then it's not detecting a car in front of you. If the battery sign is blue, then it has detected a car in front of you. So it's telling you whether it's going to um, apply the brakes or not automatically. Well, when I say brakes, again, it's just the regeneration um, braking system, not the actual brakes. So this almost sounds like it's a collision avoidance system. Um, you're coming up to a roundabout, there's a queue of traffic, uh, you haven't noticed it, the car will slow down for you. But it's not the same as the Ford collision system. The Ford collision system is more about emergency braking to avoid an accident. The smart recuperation is an intelligent automatic way of braking using the regen braking facilities to uh, avoid traffic in front and to adjust your speed accordingly. What I've found, uh, my favorite setting now um, is basically I set auto recuperation on and as soon as I'm driving in an environment where there's some distance ahead of me, say, I don't know, a mile or two or three miles ahead of straight road, I'll stick it into uh, coasting mode. So even though I'm in auto recuperation, you can still use the paddles and adjust the regeneration levels for how you want to drive. So I adjust it down to coasting um, in auto recuperation and then let the car apply as much braking as it needs to according to traffic. And it really is good. If you're following traffic and they slow down, well, the braking is applied automatically and it slows you down. Now, it's not like cruise control. It then won't speed you back up again. You have to apply the throttle. But basically, it truly is one foot driving. You're just on the throttle. And then even though you're on the throttle, the brakes can be applied. And you think, oh, what am I slowing down for? And it's because a car's just pulled out from the side. And it's um, helping you slow down, ready to avoid that. I find that really, really useful. It felt, um, it felt helpful. It really felt like the car was helping me drive. And that feeling of automatically adjusting the coasting from coasting level to regen level one, two, or three, and doing it automatically rather than using the paddles, I really, really like that. So I found myself getting used to it very, very quickly, which makes me wonder, the more you use it and the more you're used to the car braking for you, whether you will remember to use the brake pedal uh, quickly enough. Getting used to these automated features is a, is a challenge, isn't it? Because one, we're learning to adjust to them, but as soon as you do adjust to them, do we rely on them? So yeah, you have to keep your wits about you because it won't avoid an accident, it just slows you down. Apparently, um, it doesn't work under six miles an hour or 10 kilometers an hour. Um, also, it doesn't work if you've got cruise control set. And there are some other factors where it does and doesn't work very well. It says in the manual that it might not detect narrow objects, but I found yesterday it detected a cyclist on a racing cycle, and you wouldn't get much slimmer than that. The manual again says some very odd things, though, about when it might not work. And let me read this one to you. The smart recuperation system may not operate temporarily due to electrical interference, modifying the suspension, differences of tyre abrasion or tyre pressure, or installing different types of tyres. Um, different tyres or different tyre pressures might affect um, the braking and the auto recuperation. Uh, I really can't quite fathom out why that might be um, and why that might be so sensitive. So um, it'll be really interesting to see how that works, for example, in Norway with the people that are changing to winter tyres and different alloy wheels and different tyres all the time because if it affects the auto recuperation, that might not be a very good thing. So I was quite keen on changing the wheels at some point and having different tires on as well. Uh, but maybe if it does affect the performance of the car and how some of the features work, which I still can't quite understand how that might be. But uh, you know, if the manual says it, there's potential for it, I guess. So for all those doubters out there that think the automatic regen facility won't break for you, well, one, the manual says it will, um, and two, I tried it. So I set the car into um, manual regen levels one, two, and three, and came up to traffic uh, up to a roundabout and didn't apply the brakes as late as I could. And uh, yeah, it, um, it left me in a very uncomfortable situation where the, I need to brake, I need to brake, and uh, I couldn't wait any longer for the car to uh, kick in. Now, yes, I probably chickened out quite early, but using that same um, feeling of should I brake or shouldn't I brake, when I was in auto recuperation mode, it definitely kicked in before I became uncomfortable. 
and uh, that I was really pleased with. It, it's a nice safe distance. Probably, I would say, almost the same sort of distance as um, the four bars on the smart cruise control. When you set cruise control and uh, you can set the distance between the traffic and front that you want to follow, you have some little bars and an adjustment on the steering wheel so you can have either one bar so it's the shortest distance, two bars for more distance, three or four for the uh, furthest distances so it'll keep you further back from traffic in front. Now I got the feeling that the furthest away for the smart cruise control that was the same sort of distance that the smart braking was actually working at. So anyway there you go that's my favorite setting now um, I prefer to drive <laughs> using uh, coasting mode in auto recuperation and then letting the car handle some of the braking for me. And I find that the smoothest, uh, the easiest, it's nice and efficient too. Um, it is maximizing efficiency by changing to coasting and braking, uphill and downhill, according to what it thinks is best. But also um, it does help you, uh, it helps you with traffic. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I hope that was informative. Um, I'm really, really pleased that this feature exists. I just cannot believe that they haven't promoted it. It's a brilliant feature. Um, I would say as important as these um, anti-collision systems, which you're probably never going to have to use, hopefully. Um, but the smart recuperation is a really useful feature, and it's there to be used all the time to make your driving experience better. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Thanks for subscribing, and uh, more information, more tests coming up very, very soon. See ya. Bye.